This is the Wayne Ayers Podcast. The Wayne Ayers Podcast. Woohoo! Time to wake your ass up for a blessed day. What's up, everybody? It's the Wayne Ayers Podcast, episode 57, I believe this is. Oh, I don't know. But, you know, I appreciate everybody that's rocking with me. We got very special guests, you know, the incredible Katrina Lawns coming on here. Hey, Katrina. Hi, how are you? Pretty good. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm so I'm so sorry. I thought I, I thought he said one fifteen. I saw that you logged on at one. He totally did, and then I was <laughs> on time anyway, and I was like, oh, okay. But I just okay. didn't. <laughs> yeah, just I just thought, like, oh my god, let me go in there real quick. But um, like, how you been? I'm fantastic. That's good. I saw your interest at Classicon. I just want to say that was like one of the most iconic things I've seen in my life. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, wait, what? Like, what? How did that even like come about? Uh, well, let's see. I knew, um, I feel like I was brought to Clexicon specifically to interfere with their panel. <laughs> I feel like I served no other purpose than that. Um, and, you know, I was going to come up with, go up there with the white truce flag because, you know, I brought them a baby shower present. And then, uh, one of the people who I work with, uh, um, who was also a very good friend of mine, Jeff LaDuke was like, you should ride in on a horse. And I was like, where do we get a horse? And he's like, I happen to know that there's a unicorn over here that you can ride on. And then we asked the promoters, we're like, is this okay? And they're like, yes. And they immediately made it happen. So it was a collaborative effort. No, I was just like, yo, that's, I've never seen an intro. Like how, if you do like, a, are you planning to do any more comic cons this year? Um, I'm doing Christmas con this year. Okay. Like, how do you feel? How do you top that? Well, I don't, <laughs> I don't know that I'll be topping that one at Christmas con or at any other convention for that matter. I feel like the only way to top that is to, I don't know, have like a pulley system and like ropes and like fly in somehow on a set of <laughs> magical wings or carpet. So I don't know that that's ever going to happen. This, this may be the top and it might be all be downhill from here. Okay, okay. I mean, I was like, yo, that I mean that's a good way to do it. honestly. If I was you, I would just not even take any more comic cons. I would just leave it. Yeah, I was like, and we're done. And retired. yeah. <laughs> I wasn't like um reuniting with like Sarah and Jess and all of them. Um Katie is uh I mean, yeah, I don't know why I say yeah, Sarah. I was like, like, okay, Katie, okay, like, like, Katie and yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know why I'm in the chair. <laughs> yeah, Sarah, Ava, Katie, Jess. Um <laughs> such a great group of people from the CW and love. Uh, it's always great. It is always great to be back with those people. So whether it's with Katie or with Katie Cassidy or um, Candace Patton, anybody, anybody from that world meeting, like I met Jess for the first time at a Comic-Con and then getting to see her again and like having our friendship build over the years through Comic-Cons has been really quite special and magical. So yeah, when they're there, they're always my favorite. Is um, it weird? Is it weird seeing like the Arrowverse end? Because like that was like everybody's favorite verse. Like I don't think CW would ever get a verse like that in their life. But like that verse is like so like meaningful to so many people. Like is it weird to seeing that end? I don't know that weird is the right word. We knew that it would eventually come to an end. And anytime a show starts to get into year five, six, seven eight where you know arrow and you you know it's coming eventually unlike the show that i'm on right now which seems to it's gonna live on in perpetuity so so that other than a show like that you know it's gonna come to an end so i don't think the weird is the right word i think i'm sad and um you know it's always a a lot of nostalgia and it's bittersweet because you know everybody wants to move on to a new project because we're in this to be creatives and to create new roles and to explore different worlds um that being said when you have a universe such as the arrowverse which is so rich and 
colorful and so dynamic with so many different characters and people that come in and constantly change the world and change your character's views and change the trajectory of your character. It always stays fresh and interesting. So yeah, I think you're right. I don't know that there will be another verse like that for a long time. Um, but it's, it's sad. It's sad and it's bittersweet at the same time. It's so nice that I get to come to conventions and see Katie and see Jess and every now and then, you know, Steven and the rest of the crew and, you know, re reunite and have a great time together. Would you ever like CW came to you today? Like, Hey, we want to do like an Arrowverse movie. Like, would you, and like for like two or three hours, like, would you like want to be a part of that? If they came yes. to you today, like, okay like we got fans we gotta get on them like we need one <laughs> I'd be so sad if they didn't ask I'd be like oh <laughs> okay but now you're in NCIS it's like iconic it's gonna run for 77 seasons it seems like yes. <laughs> <laughs> like how was the like what would like where were you at when you first got the announcement like hey I'm gonna be in NCIS where was I well I was in LA uh, I just moved back cause I, I quarantined in New Jersey for most of the time with my parents. And so eventually we were like, okay, we gotta go back to LA. Uh, so did the cross country drive and got back to LA and I was in the middle of fixing up the, the house that I was living in. And then I got the call to audition and, um, yeah, it's, it's an interesting thing. I had no idea that season 19 which was last year and then of now season 20 of NCIS would turn out turn out to be a dream job. I cannot describe all the ways in which I love this job and I love this cast and this crew and the fans have been so lovely and so welcoming and it I think that was the scariest thing about coming on to season 20. Look, I I did Hawaii 50 and I came on on season 10. And I was really scared because, because that is a rabid fan base. I was like, oh my gosh, this is, this is going to be sink or swim here. And they were absolutely lovely to me. But then you come on to NCIS, which is 20 years. People grew up with this show. They watched the show with their mom. I'm one. I'm one. I am oh. one of those people. Me. Okay. So, so <laughs> it's not like this little blip in their life where they're like, oh, no. you know, once upon a time I watched the show. They're like for 20 years. Every week I watch the show. I am invested. I know these characters. They make me feel good. They are part of my life. So to suddenly like kind of interject into that um, was daunting. And, uh, but I feel like the fans again have just been so welcoming and so kind. And, you know, I know they miss their favorites and it's hard with Harmon gone. And, you know, I personally also miss, uh, uh, Dinozo and, and Ziva. So, you know, like I, I get where everybody's coming from that being said, they've, they've stayed true and they're still on board for the ride. And I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. I'm one of those kids that my mom made us watch NCIS, Law and Order, <laughs> all those good shows, even though we want to watch something, do I know we're watching this? And then we like, we first were like, man, whatever. And then we started watching it. Okay. We actually like this show, but like, <laughs> I know, but, it sucks you in, right? Yeah, just like uh, it feels like the show, like watching the show, goes by so like fast. Like, how long does it take to film an episode? I'm like watching the show, it feels like it just goes by like. like um, quick. well, I think the show goes by so, goes by so fast, and I think this is why NCIS has been such such a success over the years. Is that um, between Harmon and the original producers and the cast and everybody uh, and crew, they managed to find a formula where there's just enough drama to keep you invested, but at the same time, it's character driven and you love these characters so much. So you kind of really don't care about what the crime is. It's just an added bonus. You want to see the team interact and you want to see what shen shenanigans they get up to. And by the end of the show, you feel like you've solved the case, but you also end up just feeling good watching this show. And I don't think there are too many procedurals out there that leave you feeling good at the end of the show. And I feel like that's what a lot of people want. They want to tune in. They want to watch their favorite characters, do some crazy stuff, and then just feel good at the end of the day and go back to their lives that they love living. So I feel like NCIS has really um, hit the gold mine when it comes to that. Um, we take eight days to shoot an episode. So the crew call in the morning is normally 7 a.m. And then we normally wrap by 7 a.m. or 7 p.m. So yeah, it's a typical day, typical show. I like I know like all like the OG characters are like gone now. Like 
how does it well, like Sean Murray? Right. We, we still gotta hold out, <laughs> and we, yeah. got, we got Ducky. Yeah, yeah, we too. We still got Ducky. Um, do you feel any pressure, like just to carry on the show? Like, the, like does like the cast, like, oh, do you guys feel any pressure to just carry on that legacy? Yes and no. I think there's something there's something wonderful about coming on in season twenty, which is unheard of. Uh, where you go, if the show <laughs> ends, it's probably not because of me it's probably more because it's season 20 and you lost all your original or most of your original cast but at the same time um the show is still going strong it's still the number one show in the world I don't know I feel like I magically jumped onto this golden train so I think my job is to just not derail it no that's true (laughs) And like I feel like it's one of the like Law and Order too. Like those shows, great if Grey's Anatomy, like those shows can go for however long you want to. But like, how long do you see yourself wanting to be a part of it? Um, I don't know. I I just I'm kind of just along for the ride and and just seeing where it goes. So if it goes for two more years, yeah, I'm totally on board. If it goes for ten more years. I might not want to be on for 10 years, but then again, ask me in 10 years. So <laughs> you, you never know, like you never know where life takes you and how, so it's hard to kind of say, but yes, would I like to, would I like to see the show go for four or five more years? Yes, for sure. I think, um, I feel like there are other platforms where the show, and I think it's because the writing, the writing has stayed creative and it's stayed fresh and it's really kept these characters alive and the spirit of the show alive so I feel like if they if CBS wanted to they could keep it on for 20 more years or they could move it over to Paramount plus I feel like there's so many options and I feel like the fan base would follow because that's how much they love this show yeah I know like what was your favorite episode shooting um season 20 I know it comes out soon uh what have what have we shot so far um well, I can't tell you about it because it hasn't aired. Uh, I can tell you about season 19. Okay, what was your favorite episode in season 19? Um, my favorite uh, episode was uh, the one with Brian Dietzen, who plays uh, Jimmy Palmer, where we're running through the woods and we have that cabinet scene where I'm pulling a bullet out of his thigh slash butt. That was a lot of fun. I know. Oh, speaking of um, Dr. Palmer, I know like him and Jessica. Like, What can we expect from those two um, this upcoming season? I think you can expect to see two people trying to navigate a work relationship and um, what it means to have a work relationship, what it means to try to be a professional in this business. Uh, I know both both of them have had previous relationships. Um, You know, unfortunately for Jimmy, his wife passed. And then we've alluded to Jessica having a past relationship that wasn't that great. Uh, so I think you get to see some of those things come to life and uh, you get to see the two of them deal with it and how they how it is that they deal with it within a workplace. So fans can expect to see more of a backstory from Jessica. I know everybody wants to see that. Oh yeah, you get to see a backstory. You get to see a lot of a backstory. I think there's going to be, yeah, yeah. You, you get to full on see the back story you will understand this entire thing when you see it <laughs> it will all make sense to you I know like I know you didn't get to really work with Mark as much or you know but is there any way like people because a lot of people I don't know if you've seen online they're like hey maybe he'll come back for season 20 and I saw like executive producer kind of hit at something like what are the odds of people see him Gibbs back I, I personally have no idea. It's above my pay grade. Um, you know, I've, I worked six episodes with Mark. He was absolutely wonderful and delightful to me. He made me feel so welcome on the set. He was the first person who called me. I think it was like an hour after I was cast. He called me to welcome me to the show. And the first day I showed up, he went out of his way multiple times that day while he was working to follow me around to make sure that I knew where everything was. If I had any questions, he tried introducing me to the entire cast and crew within one day. It's a lot of people. (laughs) So he was wonderful. That being said, I'm one of those people that's like, is he coming back? So I, I would love to see him come back, <laughs> but I don't know. I don't know. I know that he's earned his um, retirement though, whether it's temporary or permanent, he's worked a very long career and 
being on a procedural that shoots usually anywhere from 22 to 26 episodes a year for 20 years is a grueling task, especially when your days are 12 to 14 hour days. So I, I, I have all the respect for in the world for him. If he decides, you know what, I'm just kind of out. I'm happy in my retirement. You guys continue with the legacy. I'm just going to produce. So if that's his deal, then great for him. If his deal is, he's like, I'm bored and I want to come back. Yay for us. So (laughs) (laughs) what's like the best advice you have received from him? I know it's like a short amount of time, but was there any advice that he gave you like, oh, yes. man, I'm going to carry this on for the rest of my career? Uh, he basically said to keep pushing uh, to in, in his own way. And I, I feel like it was very much a remnant of his football days of keep pushing, never settle. Just make sure you don't get comfortable. So because comfort usually leads to laziness, whether it's deserved or not. And then it leads to apathy and then it leads to stagnation. So I think the whole message of fight for your character, fight for your part, fight for your roles, fight for the show, fight for your career kind of was said multiple times in the six episodes that I worked with them. Okay. okay. I like it. Uh, what, what's, oh, what's like your personal hopes for um, just this upcoming season? My personal hope is to find out more about her. I'm kind of with the audience where I'm like, I don't know who my girl is. Like I I know little bits of her, um, but a lot of times I read something and I'm like, oh, this is who she is. And I find out six weeks before the audience does. So I'm kind of on the same journey where, you know, I I make decisions about who I think she is or uh, the clues that I've been given so far. But then all of a sudden you get a nice chunk in the episode and you're like, ha ha, this is something solid and substantial. One of my favorite moments was when um, I had let them know that because I'm half Asian and I speak Mandarin, I let the producers know that. And normally what has been the case is they've gone, that's cute, moving on. And for the first time, they're like, oh, let's have you speak Mandarin on the show. Let's make your father Asian. Let's have you speaking to your father on the phone. And then I asked if we could, if I could have a good relationship with my father instead of, you know, like this tumultuous one. And they're like, yeah we don't have good relationships on the show. <laughs> Let's do it. So um, the fact that they leaned into my heritage, the fact that they leaned into the diversity of it all, um, you know, that was a nice moment to kind of be like, oh, so I have a father. He is Chinese. He speaks Mandarin. I speak Mandarin. He's stationed abroad. It just kind of gives you a lot to, to play with mentally all of a sudden instead of kind of being like, I have no idea who my parents are. So little things like that kind of geek me out. No, how important is that on the set? Can I interview like multiple people from like Law and Order and Grey's Anatomy? And they kind of like call it the like, not like the same exact story, but they have like, they'll go to a producer or a director or a writer and they'll say, um, hey, can we do this and that? And they'll go, hey, yeah, we'll listen to you. We'll try this out, da, 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 da. And I feel like shows that do that uh, seem to, it seems like they last longer. So like, how does it point, how important is that to for like a film set in general? I think it depends on what you're working on. Um, you know, if you go into a handmaid's tale and you're like, yeah, <laughs> I think my care, I don't know that that's going to fly. And I also think it's because of the nature of, of the show, you know, something like handmaid's tale or any kind of limited run series or like a shorter season. It's, anywhere from eight to, I don't know, 13 episodes. Right. So it's easier to go. This is the arc of our story. We are going to have, especially a 10 episode. We're going to have your character start here. And by the end, it goes here. So it's like, it's like you're writing a movie, you know, where it ends. Whereas so the, the plot lines that you have along the way generally lead to that ending. Whereas on a show like NCIS or law and order or, any of the procedurals that have the potential to just go on and on and on, you don't know where the ending is. So, you know, especially after 20 years, our writers, they're so talented, but at the same time, they're like, the show has been on for 20 years. If you have any fresh ideas, bring them to us. We would love to hear it because, you know, we're always looking for new things to bring to the table. So in a show like this, yes, you, you have the, the freedom and the luxury and the creative creates your asked for the, your creative input. Whereas, you know, I've done other shows where they're like, no, 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 you need to say every single word exactly the way it's written. And if you don't, we're going to make you go back in ADR and say it that way anyway. So you have like your super rigid shows and then the ones that are just like, help us. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I, I think it's, I think it really depends on what kind of show that you're on. 
Okay, Kyle was always wondering that. I say, like, yeah, like Kai hair after say that all the time. But like, why don't they just do that? More? But that actually makes sense with how you put it. Um, I know you can't really talk about this, but you have a new movie. Is it movie a year two new movie coming out soon? Yes. Like, what can fans expect from that? I know you're playing Dr. Amy Ching. Ching. Yes. Yeah. Um. So you can expect some werewolves. Uh, who uh, were they were created by Alec Gillis. And he's the same dude who created the alien predator monsters. So these are practical uh, effect. Uh, um, oh, what are they called? Werewolves. So we actually had like seven foot tall, seven foot six tall or seven foot one tall men with these giant werewolf things. So that made them seven feet, six, uh, six inches tall. So um they were quite scary on the day. So I, I was really excited when I got down to set because you never know when you sign on to these things, it could be awesome or it could be a complete disaster. But then I saw the werewolves and I was like, okay, this is going to be good. Um, so you can expect some scary werewolves. I think the practical effects are amazing. Alec nailed the, 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 the lips move and they actually snarled on the day and the eyes focused and the ears twitched and it drooled. It was crazy. So, um, you get that. You get Frank Grillo being his usual badass self. Uh, he's very funny. Loved working with him. Um, and uh, yeah, you get to see Puerto Rico shining again as the backdrop. And I've worked in Puerto Rico before. It was so wonderful to be back down there again. And it's great. Was it like, so I know you just mentioned the werewolves. Was it like people like watching you guys film? I want to know like, how would that visual scene, like some seven, six, like werewolves just. Um, you know, I don't, I didn't see too many bystanders. There were people who were kind of walking along and they would kind of look over and be like, oh God, <laughs> <laughs> but they kept going. But we, we had the streets locked down pretty well. Um, you know, it was usually in the middle of the night downtown where most people aren't roaming. So it wasn't like we were running around during the daytime, but the couple of people who did see it were, I think a little freaked out, but then, you know, it's Puerto Rico. So they're like, whatever <laughs> just <laughs> moved on i know you play like um a lot of great just great characters in the past like do you what's like your is that do you have like a dream role still yes i would love to be jason Bourne, and not like a female ver version of jason but just just jason Bourne, like everything that it entails to be jason Bourne, or or um like atomic blonde something like that just like some kick-ass role and just running around just being a badass would be a lot of fun who would you who would you like want to start with in that in that um let's see men male wise jake gyllenhaal tom hardy chris pine um okay these are so great names i like that <laughs> alba oh that would be awesome denzel yes uh <laughs> So many, there's, I, whatever, there's so many great actors out there. Um, yeah. I know, um, okay, I have this one for you. I know, um, okay, you started like in the past, like you started in a lot of iconic shows in the past decade. Is there like a show that you really wanted to be a part of in the last decade that you didn't get to be? I would love to be a part of Peaky Blinders, I think. Oh, that's a good thing. Oh, my butter's so good, huh? Oh, yeah. I don't think that I'd be able to pull off the accent, though. So I'm happy enough just sitting back and watching, like, the glory that is Peaky Blinders. Yeah, no, that's, a, I love that show, man. It's I, so that, good. That show's, like, amazing. No, that's, that's a good, <laughs> I like, no, yeah, I love that choice. That show's, like, out of this world. Like, I was like, man, I'm so sad it ends. And that I'm music kicks on, and you're just like, mm, I'm in it. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Peaky Blind. I feel like it's a very underrated show. Like, I feel like, like in America, it's a very underrated show. Can I tell my friends, like, hell, have you watched Peaky Blind? Like, what is that? I said, yo, you just got to watch it. I feel like it's going... one of those shows that, like, in five years, it's going to, like, suddenly kick up. Because I've, yeah. heard, I've suddenly been hearing more and more people talk about it that, you know, a couple years ago, nobody was talking about it, so... No, True. yeah, I, def I definitely felt it's definitely... But I'd be like, yo, why do you guys not watch it like I do? <laughs> 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 if you could create a show with your characters um from all like well not all of them but like Rebecca Lee, Quinn Lou, Jessica Knight, um Karen Beach, um Nisa, like if you could create like oh no, if you could put all those characters in like one show, like mm -hmm. what would you what would it be about and what would you like to call it? 
Um, I think me, I don't know, like something put like the expendables or something. Yeah. <laughs> or like the triple quadruple vision or I, Oh, it could be like the new version of orphan black assassin style. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. I, I would love to like, I said, Oh, you, cause you kind of, this, your characters alone, just like out of this world. So I was like, Oh, that would be actually kind of cool to see them all like in the show. Yeah. Like, or, like, no, <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Halloween's around the corner. Uh, what's like the scariest thing you have seen on a set? Scariest thing I've seen on a set? Um, well, the werewolves are pretty, um, when we were shooting, there was a moment where um, the werewolf had to lean down and I was I had to look directly at it. And when the dude was standing there, it's, you know, he's seven foot one, and, you know, got this long, lanky werewolf outfit and, and it was all fine. But then all of a sudden they're like, and action. And he leaned down, the head came down and then the eyes focused, ears came forward and it started drooling and the mouth was moving. And I was like, oh God. And I actually had, I looked away for a second because it really did freak me out because like suddenly it was like, I love it. And I was like, oh, I don't like this. So <laughs> that was pretty freaky. <laughs> Do you have a favorite Halloween movie? Um, probably Nightmare Before Christmas is always... Just kind of been up there. I love Beetlejuice. Is that a Halloween movie, or is that just kind of like a? I don't know. Be- I guess not. Uh, yeah, I don't know because like, I don't know. Like some people go like don't say like a hocus pocus, but then they'll go like Jeepers Creepers or like. So I don't know how to like dif- you know what I'm saying those are two different movies, but it's like yeah, so, like Halloween. I can't really watch any super scary movies. I've never seen a Halloween or Jason or whoever those the, the whatever those. I can't watch them. They. I'm scary cat. So <laughs> you never watched like a night mode on Elm Street? No. God no. Oh, what? I watched Kruger? Exorcist once and to this day I'm still freaked out by, by what might be under my bed. So no. Or like a pool that I can't actually see into. No, I'm good. I don't need any more of that infesting my brain. I'm good. We just we're just gonna leave that and I'm just gonna watch Charlie Brown's great pumpkin patch or whatever that's called. So <laughs> That's where I'm at. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, you know, that's that's good for you. Uh, oh, aside from your character um in uh Arrow, like what other DC, what's like your other favorite DC character? Well, my all-time favorite favorite, and it's so cliche, is Batman. I love Batman. And I want to I wish I could be cooler and like find some really obscure DC comic and make me just sound like super like geeked out and cool. But it's always Batman. I grew up with Batman. You know, we didn't really have too many female superheroes to look up to other than uh, Wonder Woman. But I like Batman because he's a little shady. He's a little dark. He's um, got some issues. So I feel like, you know, and he doesn't have, really have any superpowers. He just, you know, came up with all that stuff on his own and has figured out how to be a badass that way. So I, 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 I dig Batman. I mean, he is like the leader of the Justice League, so you know I, it, it makes sense. You know, yeah. that's a lot. That's a lot of people's favorite character, so it's not like, uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, you have like a great relationship with your friends. Like, has there ever been a moment like somebody gave you like like some like beautiful gift or like a gift that really means the world to you? Besides their friendship, <laughs> <laughs> um. I'm sure there has been. I've, I don't know. I feel like um, when I think about like the best things in my life, I don't think of material objects. Usually it's usually an experience. You know, I used to travel a lot with my girlfriends and like, from, like right now we have a trip, a camping trip coming up to Sequoia. Um, where we're all going to camp out together. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I feel like honestly, without, sounding too mushy, um, friendship and time, you know, any time that's given to me out of their day and their busy lives is pretty precious. So I'm, I'm all about that. Has there ever been like a message that like, oh my God, they made me tear up. I know like a lot of actors get those as well. Oh, you mean, for, oh, you mean like fans or friends? Fans. Oh, I thought you said friends. <laughs> no, so, fans. no, I'm not, I'm not going camping with, with fans. Um, not that I wouldn't and not that they wouldn't be very good at it, but I didn't plan that trip. You're, you're like, what is happening right now? Okay. <laughs> no, I'll talk about fans. I have, what's like the I'm sorry. The I thought you said friends. Okay. 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 Wait, let's go back. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I've, I've received a lot of really cool stuff from, um, from 
bands. <laughs> like when I was pregnant, um, I used to get a lot of onesies and like baby gifts for, uh, for my daughter. And I just thought that was really cool that people were kind of like, here, let's help support the new mama to be or the mom, like, you know, all that stuff before the baby came, before I was pregnant, I used to get a lot of alcohol and that was always fun. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, no, and then, no, I'm going to stick to it. The fact that a lot of times the fans come out and dedicate their time to going to a convention to see me is quite awesome. And the fact that they want to speak to me and that I've actually spent several hours with people at these conventions. And, you know, like that, I think that was one of the best things about the Arrowverse was that, you know, as a team, as a cast, we did a lot of conventions together and we did them together for eight years and not like more counting. Um, so we watch people, you know, meet their spouses and at the convention and we've watched them get engaged and get married and we've watched them be pregnant and then we've held their children. And then, so to kind of grow up with the fans a little bit over the past decade has been really cool. So, um, yeah, the time spent with people, um, and hearing about the impact that our show has made on them is really quite cool. I know like you impacted like many people's lives just with the characters you have played throughout the years and just, you know, just watching the shows and everything. Was there ever like a show that you watched growing up that really like impacted you? Like, and like, okay, I want even if it's like, hey, I want to be an actor or, a, you know, like was there a show growing up that made you like, oh my God, that gave you confidence in whatsoever? Um, I, it, you know, it wasn't a, it was, it was a TV, it was a movie. So it wasn't a TV. But, um, you know, everybody talks about representation and um, the lack of it and, you know, fighting for it uh, current, currently. Um, I think the, the, the thing that I ran into is that, you know, I'm half Chinese. So I grew up with a mixed culture under one roof. And it, a lot of times the, and up until recently, no one really talked about or touched upon Asian culture. So it was, you know, it wasn't necessarily a part of the conversation. So the first time that I ever watched the Joy Luck Club, I was bawling. It was the first time that I saw a representation of my mom on television and what her story was outside of being, you know, like a Vietnamese call girl from the war, like, you know, or like some weird depiction of what Asian women were. Um, but to see strong Asian women struggling to build lives in America and to raise children in America. Um, and then also in the Joy Luck Club, you watch the daughters uh, go through their struggles of what it means to uh, be Asian or half Asian in the United States. And that was the first time that I actually felt seen where I was like, oh my gosh, somebody's finally telling my side of the story instead of you know just the pure white side or the pure Asian side. So. Um, yeah, that was a really important moment for me to feel like I was seen, to feel like my story was told and to know that um, there were people like me on television, I guess. So oh, that's, that's good to hear. Um, before I let you go, I got to give you some um, fan questions. I had to knock this out real quick. Uh, so if one fan question was if you could be on any reality show like Survivor, Amazing Race, um, Dancing with the Stars, which one would you want to be a part of? Um, I would want to be one of the judges on, uh, the, what's that show called? The Great British Bake Off or, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, <laughs> that's, that's, don't, yeah. I yep, don't want to cook. Yep. I'm a terrible cook. So it's not about, I just want to be the judge that tastes all the cakes. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm agree with you on that one. Cause some of the things, the things they'd be making look and look good. Oh so. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, another one was, would you like to see more scenes from Jess and Jane and NCIS? Jess and Jane? Yeah. Oh, J so I was thinking Arrow and I was thinking of Jess McCallan. I was like, wait a minute. Um, <laughs> yes. All the crossovers, please. I think our show should just be like one continual crossover. I think that would be so much fun. That would actually be cool to see. I'm not going to lie. Uh, my last one, would, what is it at? Oh, when you're holding a cup and you're seeing the NCIS, NCIS, is there actually something in it? Yes, there's always something in the cup and it's always lukewarm coffee. 
I feel like people who don't have things in the cups, one, you can see them, you, they just kind of move it around and you're like, there's nothing in your cup because <laughs> you can always tell. And for me, I just use that as the excuse to like, get like a little shot of coffee throughout the net, like, you know, three or four hours, like, oh yeah, but it has to be lukewarm. And this one's for Larissa. Cause I know she asked it. Uh, <laughs> my mouth is too delicate for extremely hot things and it burns easily. So it has to be lukewarm. Come on, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you so much Katrina for your time I appreciate it I hope we do this again sometime during the, down the line but no appreciate you coming on yeah and thank you so much for taking the time this was fun <laughs> <laughs> bye bye